Hey everybody, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. I've got a home converted CNC milling machine and I've been using these TTS style tool holders from Tormach. It's actually a pretty common practice for those of us with this class of a machine. I have a few non-branded holders that I've gotten from various sources. I've also got a few that I've made myself over the years. I've gotten questions about both and even though I've answered those individually, I thought this would make for a decent discussion in a video. For what it's worth, a lot of this footage was shot several months ago. Either way, let's examine and measure some of these non-Tormach tool holders in another exciting episode of the ABCs of DIY CNC. Okay, so I wanted to go over some of the non-standard TTS holders that I use for my milling machine. Some of these I've gotten on uh, eBay. They're no name, they're basically straight copies. And then some of them I've made myself for various specific uses and reasons. The very first couple I got were collet chucks like this. It's an ER20. I pretty much only use ER20 collets in the milling machine for these collet chucks. Uh, it's ER20 and they just label it as a three quarter shank with uh, a 1.38 inch flange. Uh, that's how they were sold on eBay for a long time. This one does not have the groove around the body for a automatic tool changer like what Tormach uses to grab the tools with. Uh, they've come in handy for the most part and it's a little bit smaller and uh, does seem to be ground on the face of the flange. The few I've gotten more recently have featured the groove for automatic tool changing and they say this in their little etching, it says ATC three quarter shank uh, by 1.38 flange, and it's an ER20 collet chuck. They also have this 45 degree angle on the shank. Um, I'm not sure if these are made in the same factory as the prior one, but these are similar to some others I've, I've gotten from eBay imported. This is a Boring Bar Arbor. It also has a ground flange and the 45 degree taper on the spindle. Uh, the unique thing about this is that in this case, it was a matter of necessity. I had this boring bar head. Tormach only sells th uh, 7 8 thread boring bar shanks. This is a one and a half inch by 18 threaded arbor. One of the first tools I had made for this machine when I decided to start using the TTS system was this fly cutter. Uh, using an insert and it uses the, the TTS system. So it's basically like a little micro Tormach Superfly. This is a little uh, indexable carbide lathe tool and I've cut it at an angle here and this is just mild steel. Uh, I've cut the groove. Of course this isn't hardened or ground. It's usually just for finishing. This piece is made out of aluminum and it holds a coaxial indicator. Uh, it's pretty handy for finding the center of holes or even more specifically the outside of round features to be able to get your mill spindle on center or at least find a relative position. It's a pretty handy indicator. This isn't a very expensive one. I believe I got it for under $100 imported. And the, the shank that I made to fit inside the TTS collet matches an angle that is on the shank of this. And then it has a small post. It was designed to be held in a collet of its own. This is actually made out of aluminum because it doesn't need to have any sort of strength or massive amounts of rigidity. What this is, is fine for what it does. And part of the reason I made this instead of buying like a 3 8 shank tool holder, end mill holder or something of that nature, you putting it in a collet, like a ER collet, is that I wanted to minimize the Z height of this tool. It's actually kind of long. The machine doesn't have that. And it's got a taper that goes pretty far up. So if I was to hold it, uh, just at the face of its taper with the face of this tool, that would already add maybe a half an inch uh, of length just in this setup. And it would be a lot longer if it was a end mill holder that would add another maybe inch and a half on top of that. So this takes a relatively long uh, item that goes into the spindle and actually puts it in just about as compact of a package as we can ask for. This is just another blank. I don't have anything for this yet. This was a practice cut making the TTS recess just in some aluminum. Uh, this is what I machined on the fourth axis. You may have seen in the fourth axis video, making this pocket and this threaded hole. The original thought was a different kind of indicator holder, but the design I had come up with didn't actually work out in real life. Uh, and so it kind of hit the drawing board and I don't actually have a need for what I was originally intending this to be. So it is just a blank right now. In addition to using aluminum and steel to make arbors and holders for things. 
you can actually modify some tools to fit in the TTS system, as you may have seen me do with this large this large uh, face cutter. This is again, this is this is not an expensive tool. Uh, you can get these, they're insert holders. You can put good inserts in these, but uh, the holder itself is pretty inexpensive, imported. Um, you find them on eBay and stuff like that. And they come with a three quarter inch shank and they have a big enough body that you can actually cut the recess in, uh, just trip pan it in and have your own TTS version of a face mill, pretty lickety split, which is handy it, it's not perfect because you can't ensure a perfectly ground face. So you're really just trusting whatever that finish is, whatever that uh, perpendicularity on that rear face is. This kind of tool, it's not something that really worries me. So it hasn't been a problem in my shop yet, but it is something to be aware of. This little mini drill chuck is something I was actually going to make the whole video about in the first place where, before I decided to make it about all these little parts. This is something I made recently and it uses a JT number one taper to hold this little adorable Jacobs drill chuck I got. Now come to find out the drill chuck itself is actually just a little bit uh, a little bit on the worn outside, but for a drill chuck it's just fine. And a tool like this is it's actually something I am comfortable making uh, for actual cutting purposes because again drilling is only occurring in one force and almost always it's some form of roughing operation or a clearance operation. So I'm never really intent to do extreme precision work with a drill chuck such as this anyway. So the small amount of runout I do have uh, is fine and it's actually more accurate than, than my drill press. The TTS design requires a relief groove on the top of the flange so that the R8 collet has a range of motion and that the flange can be held tightly against the spindle nose. I'm using a home ground tool for this called a trepanning tool. There's a lot of good videos on them. It mostly features a lot of key relief cuts to account for the geometry of cutting into the face of a part. My old South Bend lathe, and a lot of other similarly sized lathes, has a Morse taper number 3 in the front of the spindle board. So I'm using a collet with a drawbar uh, coming out of the back to turn this part around and work on the other side without marring the shaft and while maximizing the potential concentricity. Something I had done prior to making the first cuts on this was to set the angle of my compound slide on the lathe. I did this with the Jacobs taper of the chuck in question and a dial test indicator. I did drill and tap the center of the arbor for an 8x32 screw. The chuck has a through hole allowing for this, and while I'm not sure if it's necessary, helpful, or even advisable, at least I wanted to have the option while the setup was still on the lathe. And because I know there's a general curiosity about the non-Tormach branded TTS tools as far as their overall quality and their accuracy, their concentricity, their total measurable runout, total indicated runout, um, I figured we'll just take uh, a few of these and we'll just chuck them up into the spindle of the mill and just see what the indicators tell us. The indicator never lies and it usually breaks hearts. So we will put these kind of to the uh, test, I guess, and just see what we're up against. Hey, 
what the fuck? So we're going to test first the spindle nose itself. I apologize for the glare on the indicator, but it's about the best I can do. So we'll start it off, we'll just do like 45 RPM. So less than half a thou, um, maybe a couple of, maybe we call that three tenths. I haven't upgraded the bearings and it's got, uh, you know, a good amount of life on it. I should probably upgrade the bearings in the near future, but it is what it is. So we're at less than half a thou at the taper for the R8 call it. For the sake of context and to reasonably measure the tolerance stack, I measured the runout of this hardened steel shaft in the Tormach TTS collet, and that brought the total runout right up to half a thousandth of an inch. Okay, this is the imported ER20 with the tool changer groove in it. So that appears to be just over half a thou. Six, maybe seven tenths of a thou. Which isn't too bad considering the stacked up uh, indicated runout. Let's check the non ATC ER20. Okay, this is the imported non ATC uh, ER20 TTS tool holder, and I'm going to turn it on at 45 RPM, and we will see what the runout is. Uh, inside the spindle with the Tormach R8 collet. So this one quite remarkably has a lot more run out. means it's probably okay for roughing tools, uh, my larger tools, where such, uh, such an uneven chip load wouldn't be as detrimental on the tool, but uh, it's still, that's, that's probably unacceptable for a lot of users, so something to be very aware of. So I was thinking about it for a couple minutes, and I decided to just reset it up. I pulled it out of the R8 collet, put it back in, made sure that the drawbar was to uh, the same torque that it should be, uh, made sure everything was nice, tight, and registered. So let's try that again. And yeah, about the same. I also thought about trying to find the best way to measure the runout on the boring head. I think it's fine. Okay, for some more basis of comparison. This is an import keyless chuck. It goes up to half an inch. It's a JT6 chuck, and it fits on this actual Tormach JT6 Arbor that is in the spindle with a TTS R8 collet. So let's see what its runout is at the tool. Approximately 5,000. Honestly, not surprising. As proud as I'd be to see the indicator completely motionless as I rotate the chuck on the arbor I made, I indeed have some run out, appearing to be about five and a half thousandths.
In the interest of my own curiosity, and mostly pride, I did take the chuck back off of the arbor uh, to measure it on its own in the spindle. I got a lot closer than I did with the chuck on it. Uh, I added about a thousandth and a half of an inch of total run out, which is fascinating, uh, very educating, and it actually might have frustrated me had I not went and compared it to my drill press. Yikes. And lastly, anybody curious why I'm even fiddling around with this silly little chuck? Uh, it was a gift from a friend a long time ago, and I've just kept it in the shop. I'm probably never going to get rid of it. And it actually does solve a little bit of a problem until I buy a better tiny chuck. It fits in the machine better. Okay, so there you have it. We have a small sample size of tools of unknown origins, as well as a lot of sketchy, homemade, fabricated tools. And uh, so I think we can draw some serious conclusions here. Okay, for real, uh, I just wanted to show these non-standard holders, and just I just wanted to show other stuff that, that, uh, that there's options for. Um, it, they used to be, uh, these kind of holders used to be a really good deal compared to the actual branded stuff. Anymore, I think the price is pretty close, so, you know, when we see runouts of, you know, a thou or several thou, it's going to really affect things like accuracy of your parts and uh, tool life. Uh, some of these other things, you know, like this, uh, the, the runout on this is going to be whatever it was when I bought it. I wouldn't rely on it to be uh, super accurate, and then also you've got uh, potential for variance just in the pockets of each of these inserts. It's got its own idiosyncrasies. And then these homemade holders, I think it's it's worth it to give it a try. Definitely measure your results and take good care because as you saw with this uh, drill chuck holder, even the arbor itself got within about uh, a thou of concentricity with the actual post, which isn't ideal. Uh, I would like to do better than that. If you watched this video all the way through, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some value in it. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can uh, check me out over on Patreon. Patrons get a sticker and they get to see the videos before they come out. I also do some videos just for patrons every once in a while. And I want to thank you and now get the hell out of my shop.